Well, uh, let's uh, talk now to uh, Maddie Timon Jack, who's from the Institute for Government and is here with me. Good morning to you. It's afternoon. That shows Good how afternoon. Long I, uh, that shows how in touch I am right now. Uh, but Maddie, let's just talk about the timetable here, because as Chris was saying, uh, Friday we get the withdrawal agreement bill coming not for the first time in front of this Parliament. What happens then? Yeah, so so today the, the government has said that they're going to sort of give notice to present the bill. So we should see the text of the bill anyway this afternoon. And then tomorrow we're expecting second reading. So that's the first chance for Boris Johnson to show that actually the, the election results means there is a clear majority in Parliament and they will be able to get this bill through. After that point, we'll see the, the timetable to get it through. Um, so we'll expect the Commons to look at it the first week of January to go through all those stages. And then it will look at, go over to the Lords. But I don't really see a problem in in terms of getting getting the bill through before the end of January. I mean, one of the things that is interesting is how much the bill has changed compared to what we saw in October, because now he has got a big majority. He hasn't had to make quite the same concessions to his backbenchers as he did in October. Now, the announcement that the Department of Exiting the EU is closing on 31st of January, I mean, to be expected, but underlining the, exactly the, the power that Boris Johnson now has. Yeah, I mean, it, it's clearly quite a significant political statement mm. to say the exiting the EU mm. department is going to be closed, but it is. it does also kind of reflect the practical realities that actually having uh, DexU, sort of, it didn't really work, basically, in terms of running the negotiations. We saw negotiations start off out of DexU, then moved into the Cabinet Office, then ended up going to number 10 under Boris Johnson, and actually it does make sense to, to actually think of, uh, about managing the negotiations properly from the Centre. I mean, we've, the Institute for Government has recommended running them out of the Cabinet Office because they're used to being able to man work with departments and play that sort of brokering role. Um, so, so it makes sense, but there's also clearly a political message. Now, you and I, over the, over the months, have been speaking about the Fixed Term Parliament Act and the clear intention to repeal that. But is it as easy and simple as that? Well, there's a big question about what, what they're actually going to do. Are they going to just repeal the Act and sort of try and take back the royal prerogative power to be able to call an election? Are they going to legislate to actually enshrine the executive's power to be able to set an election date? Um, or are they, and I mean this is something that they probably won't do, but, but they could look at just trying to sort of clean up the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, try and set out a clearer process for what happens during those 14 days. But clearly the, the, the clear message today is that, that they won't be doing that. They do want to repeal it. They want to take back control of that power to, to be able to call an election. So how will that go down, go down just around the corner of the Supreme Court? Because that, is this a, a warning shot? I mean, it, it's difficult to say. I mean, I think, I think particularly around the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, I mean, that, that is just saying that actually they obviously ran into difficulties earlier this year when they wanted to call an election and Parliament wouldn't let them. Um, I think it will, it will really depend how they go about doing it and then whether or not um, people think they can mount a clear legal challenge. I mean, you know, you mentioned in the Supreme Court, they've also talked about their sort of constitution commission um, and that's obviously going to be a priority for the government is actually looking at the relationship between Parliament and the courts and at this stage it's not quite clear what they're intending to do with that so we might learn a bit more shortly. Okay, always good to see you Maddie. Thank you very much, nice to see you. Uh,